You're blowing the whole thing. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, no, no, we're, but we're getting to know each other. My, 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 this is true. My, my biggest part of my history in the entertainment aspect was in production and management, really right. management. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, hey guys, welcome to San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network. I'm here with a couple of really crazy guys that happened to show up on time as Bill just made it expensive. Honest to God, I was setting up this gig, and I hear a bunch of people talking, and a bunch of people were the three guys. And what'd you say, Bill? I said what was really funny is uh, three musicians all showed up on time. <laughs> and it was scheduled for 1 p.m. They got here right on time, not a second too late. Uh, by the way, guys, with me today, I've got Mike Pinto from the Chicago Tribute Band. He calls it Transit, right? The Ch San Antonio Transit. Get that mic up there, San Antonio baby. Transit. Out of sight, San Antonio Transit. You do an awful lot of things. You're, you're in baseball and stuff like this, aren't you? Yeah, I've been in uh, professional baseball for the last 20 years. So you're a coach. Uh, well, I, I was a manager, and I was the chief operating officer of a minor league baseball team. So you're the guy that brings all the balls to the ballpark? Uh, no, Thank they you. better be shipped in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I didn't want to get too personal on that. Guys, you have anything to say about that? On, you don't run the grease on the balls. No, no, no. <laughs> I got a guy for that. <laughs> Good. Uh, You've got some things going on, man. You came out like wildfire. I mean, really, uh, the Chicago transit just took over the airwaves. And, and how do you feel about all that, man? Well, it's been really exciting. Um, when I moved here from the Chicagoland area, I retired from baseball last year. You know it, right? Uh huh. The Chicago area. Moved here. Um, my grandkids are here, and I had a chance That's to watch them good. grow up. And um, I said, you know, I, I want to play music and. Um, I love horn music. I love the sound of a big band, and oh, yeah. so I put it out there on San Antonio Musicians uh, on the Facebook page and said, "Who? Anybody out there want to play Chicago?" I wish I had known, man. I would have. I would have gone for the for the drummer. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sure. That's yours. That's mine, unfortunately. <laughs> I, had, I had a lot of drummers that wanted to do it, though. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Bill Casey's in the house. You know, Bill, how are you today? I, You're on time. It's not for being on time. You're tired? I'm tired. You, you know, Mike said it best. Uh, we were just talking, and he says, you've got to be the hardest working person on the freaking planet. Yeah. <laughs> One word. <laughs> what do you think? Um, Crazy. I don't know anybody that stays busier than him. So. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you're booked like six nights a week, and you go everywhere. Is it Maureen's fault, or is it just you're that popular? Uh, Let him have it, guys. <laughs> Let him have it. It's Maureen's me. fault that the Soul Twine Band is... is playing as much as it is know, yeah yeah because yeah, we wouldn't be playing anywhere if it wasn't for her oh she's a uh, blessing she's yeah. a blessing to everybody she's, that knows she's her booking the band and she now she's booking me solo everywhere yeah, yeah. I every time i see it looks like it's solo yeah, you should have she, her book us i think what she just does it to get me out she already does <laughs> i've asked her she said well, she won't book anybody else but him <laughs> but, but i've, I've seen her out there you know at your shows and yeah you know, what a, what a support system that is. That's yeah. just very fortunate. She yeah. brings a whole crew of people, man. I showed up. I thought I was the only one. All of a sudden, the 12 people showed up. Yeah. You know, just walking in. And they love the gig. They love this kind of stuff. Yeah, her nickname's Mo for Maureen, I guess. And, Mo? Uh, so we, we decided, to, uh, the band's decided to call her Mo Talent. She's, <laughs> she's our talent agent. That's what we need is Mo Talent. Mo Talent. Yeah, we, we don't need, need no talent. We need Mo Talent. <laughs> <laughs> Out of sight. And speaking of Motown, Alan Bush is in the house, man. This guy's got a story from Holy Heck, man. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. And, you know, we were talking probably, well, we met at Fitzgerald's the other night. I had a throwdown. Did, did you stick around for my throwdown? I did. Did you? Yes. What would you think? Well, I enjoy everything. I Not too did. shabby, huh? Yeah. You're, you're staying you're neutral on me. You're cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> you said, I, I expected you to butter me up, man. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Very strong there. Yeah, What's yeah, that? feeling stronger every day. Oh, yeah, yeah Chicago Oh, yeah, it's a wonderful song. You know your Chicago stuff. We'll get to all that. that. We'll get to all that. But, Alan, we were talking, probably the most, well, the one thing that I recall out of the bunch is, is you were talking, you, you were a manager for somebody that we know, everybody knows, my, Ricky Nelson. My, yeah, my last client was Rick Nelson. A little louder, brother. My last client was Rick Nelson. A little louder. My last client was Rick Nelson. <laughs> Jeff, thank you, sir. <laughs> we might have just blown the system out. We'll see what happens. 
But yeah, um, Rick Nelson, how in the world did you fall into that? Guys, feel free to ask yeah, any a, questions. If you guys I, have I questions, I'm going to jump in. How long is this show? What? <laughs> I, know all, I, I know all of this already. <laughs> okay, well, then, you know, it's all that for you. Uh, he had a business manager that I, I worked with and for uh, with other artists. I had a whole slew of artists that I, I worked with up until then, mostly in the jazz vein. Oh, yeah. Flora Prime and Ayurko. I was with them for a long time. Uh, I spent 25 years in Los Angeles. And after about 20 years of doing production, road management, I had a rehearsal studio down in Culver Studios, uh, the Sony Studios now. Um, and it was the, the sound stage that they filmed the original King Kong on. And I went to that and I had Robin Ford was That's one a of big shop. Friends. Jerry Boyman was the uh, King Kong uh, shop. That's a big place. King be. Kong was filming that, yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, I, uh, Vinnie Barbarians, I mean, I had all kinds of people that would come through there and rehearse with before they ever get in ready for their tours. Have you ever booked the Well Hungarians? No. You never heard of the Well Hungarians? <laughs> oh, y'all don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was working a lot. Gotta think about that for a minute. <laughs> I, I, I was working a lot of hours, so I basically said I got to fold up shop. I'm just killing myself. Twenty hour days, twenty two hour days. So you decided to be yeah, a musician and kill yourself in a different mode. Different so I took a break. On the break, I said I've had enough of this. I quit. Everybody came back once they got my last paycheck from Florida Iota's business manager, and I said, if you heard anything, let me know. He said, well, what are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to be looking for a job. Wow. You know? and he said, do you want to go back on the road? And then he asked me who, and he said, Ricky Nelson's needed, needing help. I went out there basically to help him as a roadie was my initial thing. I was, it was a six-week tour of Canada. Mm -hmm. And in the, by about the third week, we played Sault Ste. Marie, the guy that was learning how to be a road manager came out of sticks and the band sticks the band sticks okay so he see all these cats stay in the business he, you know one he way decided, or the other here i am doing a talk show i'm a freaking drummer he, he decided that he wanted to stay with this lady in sault saint marie and we were playing this in wisconsin the next day the ladies will do it to you every time right he never made it to the show <laughs> He never made Bill, it. Bill's eyes are rolling. Yeah, yeah. He never made it to the show, so um, basically when he finally he got there, it's pretty much when the show was ending, and uh, the next day I was the road manager and he was the roadie. i I, I got to ask you this question because somebody's out there thinking about it. Where were you when you heard the news that Rick Nelson had passed? Um, actually, I was uh, taking a nap because I had a New Year's Eve gig that night. I was wow. in L.A. I Did that affect perfect. your performance at all? Because I get all choked up just thinking about it. it. I didn't it was, know the guy. It was difficult. Because um, <sighs> I got the phone call from a friend of mine about 6 o'clock in Los Angeles time. And, and he's a practical joker. And he says, hey, wow. you know, Rick, Rick, plane, you know, Rick's plane just crashed. And I said, oh, you're, you're full of it. Oh, my gosh. And he said, turn on the TV. I turned on the TV and I started seeing the news coverage of the plane being propelled. And That's then, just incredible. Then I started getting calls from Rick's manager because Rick and I were real close. We, were, we lived together for basically the five years I was with him. Did you have sex? No. Good. Good for you. <laughs> I won't take God. I won't. I'm just used to tell those stories. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, what, what a sad occurrence. And I had a, a similar situation in that. I was a booking agent for a number of years. I worked for a company called Beacon Artists. You get real close to these guys. Uh, yes, you do. Certainly do. And um, one of the bands we handled was a group called Chase. Bill Chase, the trumpet player. Yeah. And sadly, Bill and a few guys in the band went down in a plane as well. Bad weather, landing, didn't have I don't know why they didn't take off in bad weather. I just, you know, but back then, I don't know if they even knew and I think there was a little more bravery too of, you know, come on, Neil, we, we can do this. We can, we can do this. this. We gotta get there and do this. Kid. I mean, Bill was a legendary trumpet player. The band was phenomenal. Four trumpets that just could scream. I remember and, that well. Yeah, yeah. Really, been a fun band and great guys to be with. And so, a very, very sad situation. Talk about fun band though, Bill. You got a lot of fun acts, you know, when you put on your show, it's nicely structured and, and I like the way you just take one song into the other and then it goes into, what's that crazy song about uh, Dick wants to know something or what is it, Dick can do that? <laughs> uh, it's called Dick the Handyman. 
Dick the Handyman. He actually wrote this song. He said he didn't record it, but I'm going to. <laughs> I want to do that. got a couple of artists that have already recorded it. So. Okay, cool. But, okay, we got to say this. Bill Casey has written songs, one of which, uh, it's not Big Red, it's, uh, what's your Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. The Dairy Queen commercial, which you hear all over the place. That's what you like about Texas. Or That's whatever. what I like about That's Texas. That's what I like about Texas. He actually wrote that thing. I'm curious to find out if you're still getting royalties. No. For crying out loud. So, no, I was stupid. Yeah. Oh. This was 1986. It was another time. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely. was young. Yeah, there weren't any uh, branding, and, and I don't know very much about that. That's where I didn't Mike know. comes in. He, he knows all about branding, correct? That's, yeah, that's. You no, know, we hadn't talked about that, but we're talking about yourself. They me a lot of money, which I, in 1986, that was a lot of money. He did buy a guitar. I bought two nice guitars. I bought a 1987 Les Paul and a 1987 Stratocaster. Where are they at now? Uh, I sold them all. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. Uh, some uh, point in time. Robert Bonovi owns the Les Paul. Uh, I've lost track of the Stratocaster. I sold that to uh, uh, who did I sell that to? Uh, I know who it is. Oh, uh, Steve Ray. Uh, he's probably already sold it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, they're gone. 1987, man. I sold those for, at the beginning of COVID because okay. I am a musician and this is sure. what I do for a living. And sure. uh, COVID shut us all down. Absolutely. We had no money coming in. It Absolutely. Did. I took this work. Yeah, that was you did. That was really a hard a time. I, I think that's when I really actually I stopped everything because I thought the world was gonna stop. How'd y'all feel? Well we stopped for two weeks at least. I stopped for two years. <laughs> that's yeah. a, just I'm saying. How about you? Yeah, well, well I was I was in the baseball business and uh, we had that a ninety six down. game schedule. Yeah. Concerts that we had planned, and we're talking all of that. thousands all of people. We're not talking yeah. about a venue that may carry 150, 200 right. people. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, thousands of yeah. people. I mean, we would put six to seven thousand people in for a baseball game, ten thousand in for a concert, and um, all of our employees were all displaced. And uh, so, it was a terrible, terrible situation. Um, baseball players in, in our business careers were over because. All of a sudden, now that's a, almost a two-year gap before they start playing again. Right, and, and they can't uh, really get back. Yeah, you, can't get, you can't get the age back. Yeah. And new guys are coming up, and they're younger, and, and they're stronger. So, so guys oh. lost their careers yeah. know, due to COVID. You know, we know musicians that mm -hmm. that all took a hit. Um, you know, a very good friend of mine is the drummer from Chicago, and I'll give Chicago all the credit in the world. They paid all their people. Um, their musicians got paid. All their staff, their crew, some of their vendors, and so they That's really took care myself. of their band um, to be sure that when they came out of it, that they were still going to have the same people, and people didn't walk away, and you got to start all over again. So, um, but you know, we all got hit, everybody. Alan, what did you do during the uh, pandemic? Um, I relaxed. I kind of wrote my house, and uh, we we kept working with Raw. You know, Raw. We I, we were. Two or three weeks that we didn't work, and then we were able to pick up weekly gigs. It was when, when the government shut everything down. Was the only times, the only weeks we didn't have gigs. So there was no question about good for you. I was really reluctant to go out and do anything. I got to tell you, but I, I started to hone in on this stuff. You know, I started thinking, well, you know, if I gather four people that are well, then we can do this. You know, five or six people we can do, we'll we'll be all right. And it turned out, you know, fruitful enough. Three cameras, and you know, we're still holding. I'll tell you, in Illinois, we were shut down completely. Yeah. You weren't going anywhere. Uh, it's funny, I found a photograph in my camera roll of going through the grocery store where we had, you could only go in one direction, and signs yeah. that said, oh gosh, wrong you way. must stay three car Oh yeah, it was wrong way. Oh. And I saw fights take place. Oh my God. I saw a woman go after another woman for going to, in the wrong direction, and... So it changed a lot. How yeah, well, all temperaments we did were just going life. nuts. Yeah. Temperaments were going nuts. And Bill, let me ask you again about your recording these songs. Do you have more songs that you can mention right now that you are responsible for that maybe you didn't get your just due? Yeah, yeah hundreds. Hundreds. You, you did hundreds. I know, uh, that's yeah. why I'm asking. Yeah. So come up with maybe one or two or three songs that we may know, I don't know. Uh, uh, but already he 
he's got Dairy Queen under his belt. Isn't even getting paid. Shame on you, Dairy Queen. For crying out loud. No, they paid you. Oh, okay, they paid him. Thank you, Dairy Queen. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They, they paid me outright, <laughs> but they own the rights to it now. So yeah. they can do whatever they want with it. Sure, sure. Including have Josh Abbott re record it. Right. You and, know, and that's, that's, that's a much better story than yours. I still listen to that. I still think it's the original. Yeah, right? That yeah, sounds good. It's it's in fact, the, the one that you hear on the radio that has been on the radio for 30 something years, it's not even me singing. But they, they totally redid the jingle. Oh, sure. Uh, because uh, there was a line in that song that says, uh, they got the hottest women and the coldest beer, and that's what I like about Texas. And they Ooh, changed that's a good line. line. Yeah, and they took, good line, isn't it? And they took that half of that I line out because waiting. they didn't like the hottest women and coldest beer, so they replaced that with DQ. That's what I like about Texas. Yeah. So well, they just replaced that whole good line, line yeah. with DQ. <laughs> and that was brilliant. But oh, whatever okay. that, that talent agency or ad agency was, I don't know. How about another song? I mean, can you uh, the Perfect else? Stranger I wrote in 1992. Uh, Nitty Green Durban recorded it in 96, I think. Or it could have been 95, I'm not sure. It's a long time ago. Then uh, it was in the movie The Perfect Stranger, which uh, we just saw recently in a, in a thrift store. And that was a movie from the 90s. But, yeah, I seem to recall Perfect Stranger. I still make royalties for those. No, uh, Perfect Stranger. That's uh, you, that was the, hit, the the cut for the movie. The yeah. intro to the movie. It's in the movie. How in the world do you get into that kind of group without spoiling it for everybody else? And, and uh, that's all done by by other businesses. That's you know they they license your songs. I mean, but did you intentionally write something for Dairy Queen? Did you intentionally no. write something for Perfect Stranger, or did it just work? Just, I was living in Nashville at the time. And, okay, well, uh, Nashville was the songwriter's capital of the planet, no? And they got, uh, they took wind of it, huh? Well, the, the people that handled my stuff were aggressively trying to market it and try to make money because they want to make money. They want to get paid, sure. yeah. They want to get paid. Well, and that's a, so that's that a new concept for me. Quite a bit of money. The song I wrote that made the most amount of money was a children's song. Uh, and uh, a girl that put out a children's album, put the song on her album, and uh, I didn't think it was ever going to go anywhere. But she ended up on the Oprah Winfrey show, wow. and Oprah Winfrey gave everybody in the audience a copy of the CD. Wow. And that was your gift. That girl, her, her name was Kim Day. She sold millions of copies of the CD, and I'm still making money off that stupid song. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's a song called The Ones That I Love. So you can Google that and download it, and I'll make more money. You got ten bucks I can borrow? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was money coming, and I thought I'd ask. <laughs> yeah. You're By the way, way, am I right? an official member of the Dog Pound? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you Dog has been recorded by several different artists. Uh, uh, Brad Paisley was going to be one of those artists, and uh, he politely declined to record it. Uh, Why was that? Because he already had a dog song on his album called uh, I'll Check You for Ticks. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a catchy tune, you gotta admit. I'll Check You for Ticks. Yeah, it was a love song. About <laughs> yeah, I was a uh, check for ticks about two, three years ago living on the south side. <laughs> True story. No, not really, but okay. Uh, pardon my back to you, man. Uh, where are you gigging right now and what are you doing presently? Uh, As if I don't know. Working around town, working at Brantley's out at uh, Benjamin and Bernie, uh, Rock and Brew. We just did a, a thing there last week. And you're presently with our friends with yeah. Classic Rewind. Classic Rewind is at Deco Pizzeria every, every Wednesday. Every Wednesday between 7 and 9. On 7 and 9. Catch these guys. Classic Rewind. They gave me an opportunity. Actually, it was Alan that gave me the opportunity to sit in a couple of times. With both Raw and Classic Rewind, thank you, my friend. Thank you so very much. You're welcome. Had a wonderful time. Those guys are very talented. We'll be at Krause's on the 19th. Krause's on the 19th, out of sight. Now let's go over to you, Bill. What you got cooking next? You got these six gigs coming up. Oh. Can you get them in line? <laughs> or yeah, actually, I, uh, one canceled today because uh, okay. it was uh, uh, weather related. Okay. But tonight I'm at uh, Vine in the Village with uh, Robert Dunnell. And then tomorrow I'm at uh, Sancho's. All right. With the other band, Holics. 
All right. Friday All right. My Claude band. Rich Morgan. Yeah. Shout out to Claude. Yeah. Friday's my band, oh, uh, the Soul Plane Band, at uh, Rebecca Creek Distillery. Now, how did you come up with the name Soul, Soul Twang. Twang Band? Because, listen, I don't understand it, but it's catchy. Uh, originally, so. uh, Andy Walker and myself were the Soul and the Twang. Oh, uh, I get it. Yeah. Okay. And, but now it's Doug now Johnson. That makes sense. Not, Doug Johnson is the Soul and I'm the Twang. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Usually the bass player. Well, the bass player's Mike? soul and the guitar player's the twang. What does that make Mike? The band. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be anywhere without oh, that. He says that when you guys are announcing your names. Yeah. Soul, twang, yeah. man. Yeah. I get it now. And yeah. Mike, what is uh, Chicago uh, got going on? With Let's see. Uh, San Antonio Transit. Our next show is June 10th. Saturday no, that is it called San Antonio San Transit? Antonio, Transit? San Antonio because Transit. actually, I was going to rename it San Antonio Transit. It should be there. Yeah, uh, well, I'll tell you kind of what it comes from. Chicago's original name, in mm -hmm. uh, a little funny story here. So it uh, started with Chicago Transit Authority. That was going to be the name. Good call. Um, we were talking with an agent and promoter, and they said San Antonio might be a little too regional and might lock you in. Have you thought of doing something with the name Chicago but without Chicago? So um, there's a, a band out there called Just Heart. It's, it's a heart tribute band. Mm -hmm. So I reached out to our graphic designer, who happens to be the graphic artist for Chicago, wow. and said to him, what a group here's what I'm thinking. Way. And so he created a logo for it called Just Chicago. And it was fabulous. And um, so now I'm getting ready to have a drum head made. And I said, this is a month, six weeks later. I sent him a note. and. Said, hey, can I use this? What color do you think? And he sends me a note back. He says, I have to forward you an email I got from Chicago. They don't want you using it anymore. Oh, wonderful. And so well, the next day I get a letter from Chicago's attorney in L.A. saying, listen, we, we're not making a big deal. We'd just like you to stop using it. Um, it's just too close to ours. And, uh, you know, we don't want a conflict in the marketplace. And with me having some friends in the band, I just really didn't want to. Sure. To push that, and yeah. so uh, Masa redesigned our logo at San Antonio Transit and did a phenomenal job. And uh, I took the T-shirts that we had just had printed and uh, had one framed, along with the letter from the attorney, along with uh, <laughs> copies of the copyright that they sent along with it. So uh, that's as good as the cowboy, so, you know, ring, the, the ring of honor kind of poster. So we're going to do uh, Sam's Burger Joint on Saturday the 10th. On the side. And uh, then on the 10th, Sam's uh, Burger Joint. Uh, then we're doing a this show with Henry Pena at the end of the month. Yeah, Mr. Pena. Uh, the Midsummer Dance. We're doing uh, the Sugarland Town Square Concert Series, which will be a really fun show in Sugarland. We're doing the Balcones Jazz Festival oh, on uh, the 28th of July. And... Um, then we got a few others uh, past uh, beyond that. Uh, I threw my name in the hat. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hey, uh, so I don't know. Let's see. Uh, Partner man, we're going to start with you on most memorable silly moments because that's what really has hit on the show. Once you start thinking about something that happened to you at a gig that's absolutely off the chart, you know, something that's funny because that's what this is. Well, it's more or less a common I've been trying, I've been trying to stir up some things. I, I mean, at the gig, I would have to say it would have been um, Summerfest in Milwaukee. And we had a police escort coming from the airport. We get there, we're late. I mean, it was a, at that point, it was on the tap stage, and we had the largest audience in their history up until that point. This is at Rick Nelson. Wow. And we didn't have a chance to do any sound check. We got up there like 20 minutes after we were supposed to have actually started. They needed to test all the mics. And so I went up and started talking into the mics. And everybody always does testing, one, two, three, testing, one, sure. two, three. It drives me absolutely nuts. Me when too. I that. So I just started talking into the mics, and I started asking the audience, asking the questions about Rick Nelson. So I did a question and answer with the audience to do the mic <laughs> test for the mics. What a great idea. And, and, and it worked out really good, and I had a great time doing it. Oh, wonderful, man. That's, that's, I mean, but one of my funniest things was the first tour that I did with them. This was a Canadian tour. Um, Bobby Neal, he did lead guitar for Freddie Fender and a lot of other people. He was out of West Memphis, Tennessee, mm -hmm. but he was really, he, he could copy James Burton and almost 10 other guitarists to the T. He was so good. 
Yeah. Bill was a studio musician. We haven't talked yeah. about that. But he, 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 he could make all these sound effects with his voice. So I'm in my room. Uh, Alan, Alan, come down here. We, we, we got this straight cat. We fed him some milk, and he went underneath the bed. He's underneath the bed. So you got four guys in the band that are all kind of act like they're pulling a cat out from underneath the bed. And Bobby says, I got him, I got him. And he makes all these cat noises and starts scratching on the carpet on the bottom. And I'm, he's, he's going to call me. I mean, it just went crazy for about maybe five, ten minutes. And then I finally realized that there was no cat under the bed. <laughs> So was just jerking your chain? Oh, yeah. And that, that was a memorable moment. <laughs> All right. And, Bill, do you have a most memorable silly moment that you can think of, man? I'm having a difficult time pulling one. I, I, I thought of several, and then all of a sudden I'm just like, ah. Now I've got that hundreds and hundreds. I know. Mary Sperone says, I don't know if I can say any of them. All I can say, <laughs> uh, Eddie Rabbit was a notorious practical joker. Really? Yeah. He got me the very first gig. That I played with him. I love that song you do. Oh, I love the rain. Yeah, love that's, one of his that's, that's just a great song. Uh, he he was pretty loose and easy to get along with. And his the very first gig, he said, "Hey, I don't want you to feel locked to your little place of the stage. I want you to be able to move around. If you're playing solo or whatever, come up front and you know do whatever you want to do. And uh, the only thing I'm going to ask you is don't touch my guitar." He tells you not to touch his no, guitar. Don't touch my guitar. I'm yeah. like, okay. I'm, I never had a thought to touch it until we got to sound check. I would have. And then we got to sound check, and uh, I tested all my guitars and my stuff because uh, I played the multiple instruments with him. I did uh, mandolin and dobro and guitar, acoustic and electric. And uh, the sound man was okay. Uh, strum a few chords on Eddie's guitar. I'm, I'm not touching that guitar. He said, just strum a chord on it. You know, I just need to get a, a thing. And it wasn't plugged in or anything. So <laughs> I, I wasn't going to touch it. It sounds terrible already. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to touch it. And this went on for probably 20 minutes where I was just arguing. And unbeknownst to me, Eddie was right backstage waiting for me to touch it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know? And the sound man was just starting to get really angry. He was like, don't make me run all the way up there and just to test this guitar. Just plug it in and strum it. And I'm like, I pick it up and plug it in. And he's right behind me. And I, I look at the guy, I go, he's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> is you having fun playing my guitar that I told you not to touch? <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, you got it. How about you, Mr. Mike? You know what? I don't really. I have nothing I can follow up that. I mean, that's just that's too good. I think back in the olden days, um, we our band had a sound check. I went off to go grab a bite to eat. Got plenty of time, and I'm on my way back, and I get hit in the rear by a police officer, and get in a oh. car accident. And now we're get. I should be getting ready to to walk on stage. Instead of filling out police reports and having my car towed. That was, um, so, it, as I think back to the, the, the all, small Yes, moment. exactly. But um, funny from the standpoint, it held you up from the gig, huh? It helped me up from the gig. So, yeah, I was, Were you late? 30 minutes. Yeah, I was 30 wow. minutes late. Had to, you know, back then, you know, no cell phones. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now I'm trying to get a hold of somebody, to get a some hold of somebody at the venue to reach one of my band members who can come and get me. I'm 10 minutes away. <laughs> um, now, I would have thought since the police officer time. hit me from the rear that they might have got me right as I think back about it, but I was a kid, I didn't know any better. <laughs> well, my most memorable silly moment happened on April the 1st, of which I had lost track of days, but I was setting up for April 16th concert, you know, I was just working and working and doing this and doing that. And I'm shopping, and all of a sudden I call my right-hand gal, Lil Gonzalez, thank you, Lil, and uh, it's Saturday, and I felt it was Saturday, I just, I didn't know what day it was, but I felt it was Saturday, and she calls me, and she says, uh, hey, uh, you know, I'm saying, I'm, I'm like losing days, but I don't know what's going on, I'm just working too hard, this, that, and the other, and she said, well, it's Sunday already, and I said, what? It's Sunday? I lost the whole day? 
You know, and I'm, I can't believe it. It actually happened. I, Saturday's already passed. It's Sunday. And I went through the whole day feeling just absolutely terrible about missing a whole day. And by the end of the evening, I about, I guess about 11.30 in the evening, uh, I ended up calling her and saying, I still can't believe I lost another day. And she said, April Fool's. <laughs> and I was like, why did you do that to me? I've been, you know, <laughs> busting my chops over having lost the whole day. And here it is. It's a fictitious April Fool's Day. And that was uh, a most memorable April Fool's uh, technology. That day has gotten a lot of people over the years. <laughs> but, you know, to have her do that to me at the time that I needed every single day that I could get, I almost gave up there for just a moment. You know how that feels. I have a good April. Tell me, tell me. Once again, involves Eddie Rabbit, the notorious practical, practical, practical joker guy. Practical, practical joker. Yeah. yeah. Right. So uh, we are doing a show with Ron Millsap as Benny, who you know is blind. Yeah. And uh, Eddie's talking to one of the guys in the band to go help him do the practical joke. And what he did is uh, before Ronnie Millsap. He enlisted set, a lot of people. He, 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 he enlisted a guy from the band. I, I don't think it was me. Some other people in the band said, that was you that did that. I go, no, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. But they went over to his keyboard. Uh, he had a synthesizer on top of his piano. And they turned it around to where the keys were facing the, the wrong way. They were facing away from him, in other words, on top, on top of his piano. And he's playing the songs. He's doing his concert, and Eddie's backstage just laughing, getting ready for him to reach up there to play, and, and he's, he's just, he can't, he can't stand it, I'm, I'm standing right next to him, watching his face, and he's just having a, a ball, but anyway, right in the middle of the song, there's a synthesizer solo, and Ronnie reaches up to get the keys, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> so he stands up, he stands up, on the piano, and he plays the solo backwards, wow, <laughs> you know, I saw somebody do that, I, I can't remember the piano player. He was laying down, and yeah, he just reached up to yeah. playing. He they had a method by which they do that. I don't know. And that, that song got over, uh, and he was like, "Whoever did that, you're fired." <laughs> <laughs> to show you how similar sports and music really are in the. I'm curious. I couldn't find the parallel. I could not find sports. My coach always kicked my butt for being a musician. Uh, Long hair, all that stuff. So tell us. So, you know, I got a couple things. So. I'm walking through the lobby on the way to get to the bus to head over to the ballpark, and I hear this incredible piano sound coming like down this hallway. I said, "I got to go see this," and it's one of my pitchers is sitting down. And he's playing classical, and so now the guys are kind of filtering in, and they're giving him a hard time, and and so, oh yeah, oh you're playing all this old stuff. You, I bet you can't play any anything current, and he just started going right at it. Um, re really impressed, but uh, give you an idea when you were talking about the practical joke. Um, you, baseball players are baseball field anywhere from one o'clock to two o'clock in the afternoon for a seven o'clock game. There's a lot of dead time. Oh yeah. Pitchers will be doing all their you know pre work, and one of my young rookies was chirping about something. You know, we should have this down here in the bullpen, or we should have this down here. And one of the vet veteran guy said to him, you know what Mike likes? Mike likes ideas and he loves post-it notes. What you ought to do is take some of these things that are popping in your head and put them on post-it notes and put them on his door. And when he gets to the ballpark, he'll see them and know the, those are some of the things we want. Of course, he brings me into this whole thing as well. And so I get to the ballpark and I have all these post-it notes and I pull one off and Skittles. We need a bag of Skittles in the, oh, and I'm reading some of these, and who the is the smart aleck in this clubhouse that thinks that I need ideas, and I'm just going off, and I go in my office and slam the door, now this kid's like crawling into his locker, <laughs> fast forward, they go out to the field to do their work, I have my clubhouse manager go over to Sam's and purchase this giant bag of Skittles. I go into his locker and I set up the whole locker in such a way that the moment oh, he opens no. the wooden door, no. Skittles are pouring down on top of him. And um, I got him. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, 
You have to. I mean, I, I brought an illusion streak. I brought, I brought an illusionist in to do a magic show wow. just to kind of break the, the tension of, you know, we're playing 96 games in 106 days. So oh there's not much time. You're going at it every day. It's like a tour. It's like you said. It's like the music business. It's a it's a tour. You know, I joke with Wally Reyes. Well, Reyes. there's there's a comparison. Yes. For crying out loud, I couldn't get that though. So I couldn't get the comparison of traveling around. One of my favorite stories of his is Crystal Gale's story. The who? Which one? Oh, the, Crystal the, the Gale. One where you sang, where, the one where you were singing her part. Oh, singing her part. <laughs> well, that was that was the, the next gig. Well, it was like. That week. Mike Brombo. Oh, yeah, Mike Brombo. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, yeah, so. Do you uh, want to tell it or is he going to say it? Oh, yeah, no, he, 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 his rendition is excellent. <laughs> after. Uh, okay, he's walking after, over to him. I see a, Eddie Rabbit uh, practical joking everybody. I, I decide. To this is number three, y'all. I decide to do a practical joke on him. And uh, we played the uh, a weekend. Uh, one night was in uh, Reno, Nevada, I think, and the next night was like Window Rock, Arizona, somewhere like that. And Crystal Gale was with us on the first night, but not the second night. She had another show to go to. So she she did her set on that first night, but we were still using the same set list, the same paper set list. We didn't have iPads back then. Yeah. Yeah, that paper set list, we were still using it, but we were just going to ignore all the Crystal Gale's set. With no brown eyes, blue, no, no that. No, just you and I. We're not... We're going to skip those songs. We get around to that time, and I go up to the keyboard player. He's the, he's the uh, manager of the stage, you know, basically. He decides everything. I said, hey, when we get to uh, uh, just you and I, just start playing it. Just, you, know, you know, we start playing it. And, and he's like, we're not doing that. And he's like, <laughs> we're doing that. You know? And he goes, no, we're not doing that. And he's like, you know, with, with his eyes, yeah, we're doing that. So he starts singing it, and I'm singing her part because I got a pretty good falsetto. You do, you got a great uh, range. So anyway, I'm singing her part, and it, it was funny to me. I don't think it was funny to anybody else, but I was watching this audience, and the, the, the spotlight up, operators up top were going stage right. She's not there. Stage <laughs> left, she's not there. Stage right. <laughs> They're looking for her, and we're we're into the chorus by now. But nah, 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 her love is my reward, and they're still looking for her. And he just loses it. And Eddie just stops the band. Stop! Stop! He's like, "Who's doing that?" And everybody in the band looks at each other and points. <laughs> so we, we get we we get on the bus later that night. He goes, so "All right, I gotta know who who did that. Whose idea was that?" And I finally confessed to it, and he goes, you know, it was pretty funny. Don't you ever do it again. <laughs> sure, it opened up a comedy talk show right there. Man. Don't ever crazy. do it again. I'm like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> that was the only practical joke I got in the whole time. Oh, that's so. great. That's great. What, payback is a biscuit? Yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, he didn't dot my pay or anything. He, he, he <laughs> sure thought it Because you were playing for art. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure. The audience you know. liked it though. Yeah, I mean, I'm it, was, sure. it was kind of funny. They could all see me, you know. Well, the first few rows, anyway. Spotlight yeah. operators were confused. They didn't know what was going on. They were like, "Where is oh she? God. Where is she?" Okay. Well, with that said, we're going to move on to shout outs. We're, we're coming close to the end of this whole nonsense thing. Really? I would call it San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network, but. Time for a shout out. So if there was anybody that you'd like to say hello to, your family, your friends, uh, your associates in music, now's your chance. Mike, what do you got for me? Well, you know what? I guess, uh, first of all, my wife. And hey, praise uh, God. Yeah. Thank um, you, Jesus. She just had my 44th uh, wedding anniversary. Oh, my gosh. So she's been through sir. baseball seasons and now music and coming to all the shows and loves doing that. Amen. Um, hey, and so um, all the guys in the band who took a flyer with me and I said, guys, I have no idea if we'll make any money at all, um, but this is tough music to do. We have to rehearse to get it right. Sure. And so all the guys who put time in, I, I need to give a shout out to Sharon from uh, Fitzgerald, who oh, was yeah. nice enough, Sharon's who didn't know me from Adam sure. and Sharon. And I, I called her and said, here's what I've got. And I'd like to do 
a night and see what happens. And well, that's where I have known her. Yeah, and it was, it was crazy her. when. That's why when I mentioned it to her, she happened to say, "Yes, do yeah. that. Do well, that. Check with it." I mean, we were going to do a Wednesday so night us and said, "You know, let's maybe we'll get fifty people." You know, and um, the place was packed to the gills. I was and sad. so, um, so I thank her for going on out on a limb and she saying, takes chances. Shot and, I, and absolutely, Miss uh, Perkins, she she is um, a visionary, I think, and she keeps her mind open. You know, so uh, these little strange ideas, like the talk show concerts that showed four different types and four different styles of music on purpose. I didn't want to do the same three blues bands and three rock bands. It doesn't, for me, make any sense right. at this point in my career. Right. And, and the people that were there just absolutely loved it. So, eclectic variety, that's your cue. <laughs> You're eclectic <laughs> and variety. That's, that's your whole gig, man. No, it, that, that just came out of necessity. Cause I was, oh, you know, that's what I was needing funny. to that's work basic. four or five days a week, so I was working on four or five bands a week. Now, listen, how do you feel that, I'm so sorry, now I'm going back and, and just saying, how do you ascertain between top 40 and what you want to play? Let's say you're a rocker and you want to play, you want to play metal. We both know you're not going to get, be getting the same kind of cash for playing metal as opposed to top 40. <sighs> what would you play if, come on now, if your absolute first choice, what would you play? All my own music. Yeah. All right. I would just play all originals all day. And then when, when COVID happened, I did that. I, I did a, 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 just a thing on Facebook. I played for two hours straight, all original music, because I wasn't sure about the royalty situation. Are they going to hit me with some kind right. of thing, you know, or somebody going to say, oh, you played our song, and mm -hmm. now you owe us money, or you're getting a, you know. Could be uh, trouble. It's a blessing that it could be trouble. Uh, yeah, I just put up my PayPal address up on my TV, and, and I said, well, if you want to send me money, I'm, I'm here at this. I made more money playing two hours of original music at, at my house. People, I do people send them money, huh? Yeah. Wow, the, wonderful. The average tip was like 10 bucks, but I had hundreds of people watching, so I was, I was flabbergasted. So you do have 10 bucks I can borrow? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have 10 bucks, but you can't borrow. <laughs> I'm trying. Don't, don't ask a musician for money. <laughs> yeah. yeah what oh, money? as far as my shout outs, so go. Yeah, uh, shout outs. My, my personal manager, my booking agent, and my girlfriend just happen to be the same person. Mo, so, Mo, and Mo. Yeah, Mo, 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 Mo Talent. <laughs> yeah, she's um, Maureen's in, in Vegas. She's right in now. Vegas, yeah. She's losing money as we speak. Probably sleeping. As we speak. <laughs> yeah, she went to go see her brother. She told me about that. Yeah, yeah she's not out there partying. She's out there in business. Oh, no, she's and relaxing. Me. Yeah, she's relaxing. I told I, her, I no work, relaxing. no work. Yeah, good for her. So she really does bust it for you, man. Oh, she's, I know. She's, she's a great partner. Great partner in a crime man. Everybody's wife should be as dedicated. I'm just saying, and I think they are, you know? Except for mine, I have none. <laughs> well, we need one. Yeah, I need one. I'm still looking. Alan can find you one. <laughs> Alan, what, what's your shout out? Let me get my book. His <laughs> <laughs> black book. Um, what's your shout out? Who, who's your shout out? Well, uh, number one for my deceased wife, uh, because she's uh -huh. not encouraged me to keep on going. And when I retired from the SAA in 2013, wow, that means a lot. I started playing back in the music, and sure. Uh, and so how can her you stop her, when it's her blessing? Yeah, her encouragement helped me with that. Her and she supported me for that that whole time. And then you know everybody that's been you know following and supporting us from Raw, um, everything I've done from 2013 up until Raw and the Classic Rewind. The people that come in and support the band and, and enjoy what we do and, and come back. You know, what is Homer's good. last name again? Gutierrez or what was it that you told me? Oh, Homer yeah. Homer from Classic Rewind. Homer Gutierrez. Gutierrez. Yeah. yeah he came out well, of did I say it correct? I said Gutierrez, right? Yeah, and sometimes I can't remember, but I, I recall that name, Homer, because he's just a great talent. Nice guy. He came out of nowhere. I'm from Dallas, Fort Worth. He moved down here three years ago when his wife got transferred. and. Uh, he started playing down here and uh, just working out of his house. And uh, I he talked to him about playing. helping him on recording because he wanted. He, he said he's got a recording studio. And I said I want to throw down with you. He said sure, we'll get in touch. And I haven't heard from him, but you know, and and then, you know how the music gig goes. And then Phil Hearn on bass. He came from USA. Oh, Phil, he's a really nice guy. Yeah, I've known Phil for twenty some years. So. 
And I played with some guy, I think, I think his name was Roger. He plays uh, bass with... Uh, Judy Blue. Yeah, Judy Blue. And I played with him just the other night uh, on, on Monday. And it was the first time I had an opportunity to play for... And play with Judy. Judy jumped up on stage. Judy, Judy, Judy. She jumped up on stage. And it was... Uh, she was just having fun with the song we were playing, that Santana song. You know, shout out to the Braxis, because, you know, all these all these guys are coming out to the forefront. I saw it. We'll have them on the show before too, too long. My shout out would be to my son, my family, the Ocampo family, all you guys. Uh, but most specifically, all the musicians that have ever been on this talk show, which are now hundreds, hundreds of people for the past 10 years, and still working on it. Um, it's the only audiovisual type all musicians comedy talk show in the nation and that's that's what happened most memorable silly moments is what you just heard a little while ago and uh, that's coined bill wins by the way bill wins hands down really <laughs> yeah yeah you win you do, don't would you like to know I what you touching any? I, I have funnier moments that happen yeah but we don't want to hear them okay <laughs> no 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 we do want to hear them. we do want to hear them. <laughs> but but he just said well, what did you say he wins he wins yeah the official San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network door prize. Oh, you got to love that. Yeah. yeah. You scratch my back, <laughs> I scratch yours. You could do a whole show with his, with his stories. And, and naturally, my two Oh, uh, thank you very one. much. <laughs> you know, they, they cost me an arm and a leg. Uh, and naturally, my other dear friend, Alan Bush, he receives his... Is this your honorary? Arm? Yeah. Is this your arm or your leg? We have to get these branded. That's my arm. That's my leg. That's my other leg. We're not talking about that. We better get you branded <laughs> on these things, though. I'm telling you, yeah. We, we better put put the name on it, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is one of those least. things. I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. That's it. <laughs> you weren't listening, you see. But yeah, that's the whole truth. It's actually something I'll use. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. It's a. It's a. It was not only a door prize. My other door prize. Well, it's a door stop. And a door lock. What do you want for a door price? I don't hear a freaking word from you guys. What's the matter with that? Can you guys was, chuckle or anything? Yeah, yeah. You told me I was going to have a surprise when I got there. Thanks for the surprise. Yeah. <laughs> surprise. Actually, the surprise was supposed to be that you didn't know he was coming. And he didn't know you were coming. But I had to put it out there today. So, you know, everybody knew. Everybody. I saw that. I know. That's what I'm saying. Everybody knew. By that time, I was like, ah, my goose is cooked. So, anywho, it's always a blast to have you guys. And any any uh, burning desires here out of all this thing? What do you think about this talk show nonsense? Oh, one thing I do want to say, Urban Urbano and I, shout out to Urban and all the drummers in San Antonio, Bush, Pinto, we're going to throw down at Brackenridge Park. We're working out the logistics. It's going to be called Us Drummers. San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network is going to sponsor it along with Urban Urbano and whomever else wants to come in, but we're the two heads. We're working on it. We get together on Saturday. All drummers are invited to the park at Breckenridge. We're going to cook out fajitas and feed our friends and work on some stuff. You know, we're not going to try to break any Guinness Book of World Records. That's about 3,000 people in a stadium. And we're, we'll be at Brack. Close, but no cigar. And I don't know if we have time for all that nonsense, but still. It yeah, should be fun. Cigars come from Cuba? <laughs> all kinds of stuff comes from so it's, Cuba. <laughs> it's going to be one big drum set, like the world's biggest drum we're, set. We're all working on that. You know, <laughs> we're working on that. And, and we, it's you know, one big circle. But we're talking about, you know, funding it and doing something. And Urban, that was it. I just wanted to have fun. But Urban has a, he's like your mind. And he's oh, like wow. your mind. And he's like your mind. It's all about marketing. And it's all about doing it right. And we only get one chance. And I'm like, yes. Okay. So, you know, I'm a team player, too. I mean, I, I want to know what you guys want, you know. Otherwise, I won't ever know. <laughs> he needs his back scratched. <laughs> I, I want a pound of hundreds. You want a what? A pound of hundred dollar bills. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. A pound. I wonder how much a pound of hundred dollar bills would be. I wonder if there's a some lot. place you could type something in and search for answers. Right? I think we could probably get that answer on Google. Google. Oh, that that probably is. Oh, that, right? <laughs> That's a new approach. How much is a pound? <laughs> 
Uh, hey Siri, how much is a pound of <laughs> <laughs> that might could work? I don't know. But yeah, so we were on burning desires. Does anybody have anything aside from all the nonsense we already discussed? Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, fries. You know, onion rings. Well, yeah, this is Paul Candera. He reminded me, and it's very true. You know, you can buy your cheeseburger and your fries and all that. That gets pretty expensive nowadays, doesn't it? Yeah. The benefit is the the ketchup's free. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> so you can have all the ketchup you want, man, with the fries. So you buy the fries, you get free ketchup. So I'm hoping you guys can help me with something. Moving here from Chicago. The one adjustment I've really had here is pizza. The pizza in Chicago is phenomenal. Yeah. And so, what would be your go-to? This is absolutely the best. Go to pizza the pizzeria, uh, First Brew Road. And go see Jacob. Right. It's a, it's kind of closer to a New York style pizza, though. Okay. And that's yeah. where yeah. He, he has yeah. everything from yeah. shrimp yeah. pizzeria. Okay. Shrimp pizza. He's like Forrest Gump on pizza. Here's okay. my plug. Eighteen fifteen. Okay. <laughs> that was my plug. I, I guess it's well anyway. Well, I did a gig there with a talk show that went out worldwide. And that's where this is going. It's going to venues now. So by the time we get to the venues, you guys are always welcome to come over and heckle and come on up on stage as well. It's like you always have a mic for people. Anyway, once we do the shows live, you're actually going to hear these people chuckle. And they take interest. And, and we, may have a, we may have that uh, interaction between audience and the participants on the show. Most people that know me know that I don't eat meat anymore. I stayed seafood, so pescatarian. But when I lived in Chicago, the, the roast beef sandwiches oh, yeah, and the cash and beef, and yeah. with the green peppers, I mean, there were a couple places. I mean, it, it was just phenomenal. And you're making me hungry, man. Yeah. Even yeah, you're making me hungry. Chicago style hot dog. Now, yeah. 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 I ate a hot dog for breakfast. It's so it's so good. That yeah. single yeah. Like Chicago single hot dogs are very unique. Yep. Um, yeah. Italian well, they're meat. wieners, man. Yeah, yeah. they're not. They're, they're not, <laughs> right? right? They're not just a hot dog. No. No. <laughs> it is a meal it's, in it's, Chicago. It's different. It's, they're real different. And but the it, roast beef always got me with the with the peppers and the aloo. That was oh yeah. That was one. I had to learn how to make it so that I could get it here. Um, you know, just the it was so readily available. You could go five minutes in any direction in Chicago. Right. And get a great slice is so thin. It's yeah, yeah it, it really, really is. I mean, it is. Yeah. It's really shaped. Yeah, but it, it doesn't fall apart though. I mean, I, I, those are my. I mean, from yeah. a food perspective, well, that's what I remember about Chicago. Yeah. I just want to say that just remind you. Right I mean, if it isn't Mexican food, that Philly sandwich is you know something else for me. I don't know. Yeah, they're great. I mean, I've got found great Mexican food down here. Oh, um, great, say, bar Mexican great food. barbecue. But, yeah. um, you know, again, Italian growing up, growing up in, with pizza and great Italian food. And so I'm still struggling to find where are those best places here in town. I'm playing at a place Sunday that has really good pizza. Probably the, the place here in San Jose that has bootleggers pizza. The new Bronx. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I'm playing up there Sunday. And I, so I'm probably going to wait till Sunday to have pizza because their pizza is pretty good. Well, give me a report well, in New Brownfields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to yeah. New Brownfields. Yeah. yeah. Poor House, the Poor House actually, I did a worldwide talk show yeah. from there. Yeah. I had a different engineer in my son. Now I have Marius Barone's engineer, oh, who yeah. is Phil Antoine, 19, 20 year old, up and coming, yeah. brilliant guy. Somebody that we could all use. If you guys ever have any questions, call me. We'll, we'll hook him up with you. Okay? Because yeah. he's for hire. I mean, these yeah, days, technically, we does. have to be advanced. We have to. We can't. Look at this stuff. You think I can come up with all this? You <laughs> no. I mean, I don't know anything about this nonsense, but I'm learning. You, you know? don't have to turn the TV on. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a big screen. But, yeah, these are little tiny things, of which, you know, the, it's, it's all about um, audio and video engineering. Right. And there was a time back in the day when I was just contracted with Ustream, I would just send them and just turn it on and just do this whole thing and it would go right directly to them and they'd handle everything. Nowadays they have, you know, the editing process over here, the codec thing over here, the other thing over here, and now everybody's getting a piece of the pie and now it's gotten pretty expensive. Right. You know, it's not the same as it was when it first came out. 
It is expensive. It is time consuming. But what else do we have? But a little bit of time and a whole bunch of ideas. Not not as much time as we used to. Oh God! Okay. As we said, no, we well, that's we're you speeding know? it up. I think. That's it. Think? I mean, after COVID, I feel like I'm catching up. I'm making up for lost time. By the way, I'm out today, tonight, with Willow and Gage uh, in Austin, Texas. I'll be going down with them at Broken Spoke. I'll be covering his band. Awesome. And I'll be talking to him on break, hopefully, by 11 p.m. So with that said, you know, I, I just want to thank these guys for coming out and spending an hour with me uh, for San Antonio Musicians Talk Show Network. I'm at Ocampo Sr., and we're out to change the world one day at a time. So go out and go do something good for somebody today. Okay, do it today, man. Tomorrow, it's not guaranteed. What do you guys think? Yeah. Amen. Absolutely for sure. Every day, every day I get up, I say, thank God I got up and got my feet on the floor. Amen. But we got to help somebody. we got to do something good for somebody. Just a little tiny deed. If it's given a $2 bill to, you know, a $3 to a homeless person that you see looking in the trash for something to drink. I did that the other night. This young lady was picking up a, and she was looking in there from the trash can to see if it was okay to drink out of. And you know, it just touched my heart. And I said, you know, for the grace, but for the grace of God, I could be homeless. So I gave her three dollars, and she just lit up, man. Like, oh my God, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. No, 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 no. Bless you, and go on with your bad self. Get yourself some meat. You're making me think. My wife would always keep a. She had a couple singles bags. This show is never going to end. In, and then she would have them in the car. And she'd come to the stop sign and people would be asking her for money. She yeah. would give them a bag that had some water in it and oh. some, some things to eat. Good for her. How sweet. You know, and, and, and that was her way. See, let them learn on these thought processes, man. I got yeah. something today. Um, I've been in an urgent care thing last week. And I got a thing asking me to review them. And uh, I'd heard something. And I don't know who to give credit to. But. What if we were all getting a Yelp review on who we are as human beings every day? Mm. So how were you when you were at the grocery store or at the restaurant? And were you nice to the waitress or were you a jerk? And so at the end of the day, we all got rated on our personal Yelp review. What kind of human being are we? And so, you know, not to get too heavy, but it's kind of along that line. I, I give your, uh, your, uh, your, the your wife, best wife, uh, um, yeah, five star Yelp review. That's, what a wonderful <laughs> That's fabulous. A five star Yelp review on this talk show. To your wife, nonetheless. Yep. Ah, Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, guys, everybody wave to the cameras and say ta ta. Ta ta. You know, we can't say uh, Sabuego or uh, Arriba Dirty. Or what are the other ones? Help me, guys. Arriba Dirty, Sayonara. What else? Aloha. Ciao. Ciao. Yeah. And what else? Wish you well. 